In the mid-1800s, there were a lot of inaccurate and conflicting ideas about heredity. Many people thought that life was spontaneously generated, that mice would just appear wherever food was stored. Other popular ideas were that all genetic information was passed through the male line, or that acquired traits could be passed from parent to child. In the midst of this confusion lived a young monk named Gregor Mendel. He planted thousands of pea plants and spent years recording what type of seeds and flowers grew in his garden. His conclusions were revolutionary to the thinking of the time and became one of the most famous science experiments in history. In this video, we're going to explore the basics of human genetics with cartoon aliens. Say you have a group of aliens where most of them are green, but some are purple. Most baby aliens are green whether they have two green parents or one purple and one green. But every now and then, a purple alien pops up, even when both parents are green. To explain this, Mendel came up with a fantastic theory that each living thing received information from both parents, but it was transferred in some invisible way. Ooh. Today, we have a name for this information. We call them genes. Each living thing has a genotype, that's the genes that it has, and each living thing also has a phenotype, that's the traits that you see. When a gene is dominant, you only need one copy to see the trait. When a gene is recessive, you will only see the corresponding trait if the dominant gene is absent. In the example of our aliens, green is dominant, and purple, represented by the lowercase g, is recessive. Aliens that have the same copy of a gene are called homozygous. In this cross of a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive alien, the offspring will all be heterozygous. That means they have two different versions of the gene. In the cross of two heterozygous aliens, something interesting happens. Since there's a 50-50 chance of each parent giving their child either the green or the purple copy of the gene, we can draw out the possibilities with what's called a Punnett square. This shows us that on average, one quarter of the offspring will be homozygous dominant, one quarter will be homozygous recessive or purple, and half will be heterozygous and appear green, just like their parents. Can you predict the outcome of this cross? Pause the video and take a minute to fill in this Punnett square. How many green and how many purple aliens do you predict we will find? If you printed out the worksheet that goes along with this video, now is the perfect time to pull it out. If you said half green and half purple, then you were right. Every alien child is going to get one copy of the recessive gene from the purple parent. The green parent will give half the offspring the dominant copy of the gene and half the recessive copy. Now, in any given alien family, you might see a little more or a little less than half and half. But since the chance of getting one or the other is always 50-50, on average, you'll see the proportions outlined in the Punnett square. The discovery of traits being distributed randomly was enough to establish Mendel as one of the founders of genetics. But he took it a step further by writing that traits were independent of each other. Whether an alien was purple or green had nothing to do with if it had two eyes or one. So let's look at a cross of two heterozygous aliens where having two eyes is dominant, that's the capital E, and having one eye is recessive, represented by the lowercase e. Now we need to make our Punnett square a lot bigger because we need to consider each of the equally likely possibilities, small e, small g, big e, small g, small e, big g, and big e, big g. We'll bring those possibilities across into the square, just like we did before, and then we'll look at the phenotypes. Anytime there's a large E, the alien will have two eyes, and anytime there's a large G, the alien will be green. We end up with ratios that are very similar to the square we saw before, three quarters green, one quarter purple, and three quarters two-eyed, one quarter one-eyed. Our double homozygous recessive, the one-eyed purple alien, only happens once out of 16 crosses on average. And in Mendelian genetics, you can keep adding traits, making larger and larger Punnett squares that can track three, four, or more traits at a time. 
but in reality, it turns out that genetics is a bit more complicated than Mendel's initial theories. Not all traits are independent of each other. Not all traits are simply dominant and recessive. Mutations cause predictions to go astray, and epigenetics and gene regulation and expression introduce a whole other layer of complexity over everything, making genetics one of the most dynamic and interesting fields to study. Mendel's original experiments remain famous because they were the start of true progress in unraveling the mysteries of inheritance and genetics. <laughs>